all I said to myself is, wow, we, we have a lot of issues in Ghana, many issues that if we can find solutions to them, a year or two from now, we might be building that legacy for ourselves. What I'm going to do this evening is I'm going to share my experience with you. And I was given 30 minutes of an hour. I believe if you manage 20 minutes, then you have if 30 minutes, I have you have 10 minutes for if it's I'm able to do it within 40 minutes, then you have 20 minutes. If I'm done, then my story takes the whole <laughs> 40 minutes is that we will not have any questions, but I'll manage. Then we can have to be an interactive this evening. Um, like I said, the name says Yahua and said for Yahua And when she introduced the sales investment, yes, that's the best thing in the end, the umbrella. And that's the best kind of software of that's the best thing in the end. We provide fleet management services, car rentals, transport for conferences, and also the organization. So maybe pay, now we pay stay, the body pay Samsung. Just are all our clients that we provide that services. Um, I was in nine, uh, last month in 19 cities, the last month, and I was told that when I was born, after a year or so, my father reached the retirement age. So we relocated to Tama, the water region called Dani Dibushi. So I started with school from Dani Dibushi Primary School. Um, we really did that right. I continued. Unfortunately for me, I had to end at some point when I searched for common entrance and passed <coughs> to the fair that same year, I lost my mother. And so that's the following year, I lost my dad. I a son one I have 19 siblings. Well, if I'm the last one and they are older than me, they should, they should be there for me, they should kind of support my education. But for one reason or other, which is the story, another story, I have to drop out of school at form two. And when I got out of school, the first job I had was a drug from it, being a drug from it, because I had to relocate to a family house at the school, because I was the second store, and I became a drug from it for two years. But after three years of being a drug from it, I said to myself that I can do better than what I'm doing. And one interesting thing was I, my first relationship, my first girlfriend was from a good home, you know, and the mother was so, so, so annoyed that why are you going out with somebody who is a church from it? And in fact, that challenge. So I ask myself, if you want anything good and you don't change your strategy, you don't add value to yourself, there's no way you can get it, you know. And true, true, we threw the girl out of time and our relationship ended there. So I stopped the truck truck with business without having any other job. Fortunately for me, I learned something from that, how to drive. You know, I knew how to buy them. So I got someone who was living in a car that doesn't know how to buy it. A friend introduced me to him and I taught this man how to buy it. After we finished it, he asked me how much would I charge for that? And I said, oh, you give me pocket money every day, fed me, so I will not charge. You pay it then. Then the man said, oh, I have a printing business. What we do is we print. 
bring textbooks from junior secondary schools. So if you are interested, I can give you some on high test. You go ahead and add your margin to it and you come in there. So what about it? So immediately I got the job. If you look at I said free, I won't charge, even though at this time I talk to how to drive. All I'm saying is that it's not everything that we need to charge money for it, you know. Sometimes if you are looking at the bigger picture, there are certain things you can let go. So I got my job and I did it for another one year. I have done so many jobs, including working at the back of the bank with the government, who is facing the road. I got to my point, the money I have been able to save. I said, I will invest it and make more money and change the job I was doing because trading between Accra, Togo, Benin, I was selling textiles, clothing, jeans, and whatever. And we always have issues with the customs and so I want a stable job. So I said, okay, why not get some money, invest it, then I can get a job that will give me monthly salaries and live on that. So I put all my money then that this financial support program, I don't know if anyone yet get about program. And the two weeks after that, program collapsed. So everything I've invested has gone down the drain. I was jobless again because what happened was that the, the books that I sold, instead of paying um, the principal, I used everything in investing in Iran because Iran said they give you 30% of your investment and within two months you can make good money, which is a shortcut of making money. So it didn't work for me, I lost everything. So I have to go back to get books to go and sell. I was done this again. And another friend again introduced me to Daniel Biruka. Daniel Biruka was a car rental company. They actually built us SDC State Transport eventually. So I went there as a driver. At Daniel, I realized I was so happy with the job I was doing because what, what we do is that drive customers around, always show them around. Because of my bad one selling terms, we go to the regions. I know Ghana very well. My training between Ghana to and Benin, I know how to cross the borders. So that job comes very handy. I did that job for four years. And I said to myself, can I continue with this driving business? What can I do to change this business? So something turned on me and said, if I have one car, at least I can start it from there as my own uh, and business. I got this American lady called Luna who came to Ghana. He actually financed a school project in Brazil. So he came, she came to Ghana and I drove them along. After we finished, he asked me a very critical question. Because he asked me of my background and I told her. He said, said, what do you want for yourself? What do you want me to be to do? I want to take you to America and continue the education whilst you are working. My answer to her was, if you can help me get a one car here in Ghana, I think I can do better. He said, okay. She went to America and she sent us those 1997. We don't have this old phone set, whatever. It was fast using that. It wasn't that easy to wire money from one country to another, you know. So it was not, she wasn't able to do that. And but I should keep my name alive. Fine. I was still at my left. I met another lady that was introduced to me to work with called Louise Benia, who was a consultant to Ghana Highway Authority. The car that was given to me to use Gary Louise 
always will break down on the way. So along the line, but he went and signed a one-year contract with Vanek, which he paid every month thousand five hundred dollars to Vanek Yoka. So Louis said to me that, said, I didn't come to Ghana to die, but your car seems to be breaking down every day. I want to go to his car rental to rent a car, but I want you to come with me to drive me at his. And I said, oh, it's not possible. I can't do that. It's the same rental company. I can't leave my life and go to his. But the first day, something's going on here. Why not tell the way that you will buy a car for her to rent from you? Because the point here is that the car was giving us problem, but she wants me to be her driver. So if I propose this to her, probably she will accept it. So I said to the way, why not buy a car? I'll buy a car for you to rent from me. He said, why not? If you can do that. But I'm taking my leave, one month leave, and if I pay back and you are able to have your car, why not I'll rent from you? That was a challenge for me. The weakness, and I had to go to town to look for car to buy. At the time, I was able to save 500 cities. And I come around a track to find car. The price is the cheapest you can get is 1,500, which is 15 million at the time, now 1,500. So I went to a particular garage and I saw a Nissan Primera. And I bargained with the man to tap 1,350. Then I told the man that all I have now is 500. Because I had it at the back of my mind that Louise would rent that car and it should be paid me thousand five hundred dollars every month. I should be able to pay the installment within two months, you know. They said no 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 no, they don't do that. You know. Finally, he took me to the car owner and the man said, Okay, I can't look for you. Tell me something what I should do, because I don't know you. And why would I give you my car? And you're paying, you're not even paying 50%, it's less than 50%. For 1,350, you have 500 cities. It's less than that. So, what I said to you was register the car in your name, keep the spare key, I'll do the insurance. If two months I'm not able to pay the remaining balance, keep my money and everything. He then told me, I accept it, but I'll give you presented checks on the remaining balance, which I don't have a checkbook at the time. So I then also said to a job like me that I'll take you to my house, see where I live, and we had a deal. That was my first car that I bought in the year 2000. You know, and you and we go, Louise came, and she was happy because I am the one driving that car. The challenge I had then was. I resigned from Banef already, but Banef took the risk on that. She signed one year contract with them and she had abrogated it along the line. So they will see her. And if I sit back and Banef succeeded in suing the risk, I will lose that contract. So someone again introduced me to a lawyer that. Go back to Vanel. While I was at Vanel, we have something we call logging system. We log all our activities, movement of the vehicles. And coincidentally, I was making photocopies of certain events that occur, like when the car breaks down and we travel outside and those things. So it became so handy for my lawyer, my fine lawyer, responding to Vanel that Louis didn't approve the contract. Rather, it was the car that was breaking down each day. That was why he changed the uh, approval the contract. Fortunately for me, that case also ended. So I was making thousand five hundred dollars for myself, and that contract was extended for another six months. So I had two year contract with Louis. At the end of that contract, I was able 
to buy used cars do more in addition to what I have. I have three vehicles. The reason going back to Canada, one less for me. And what is start with what you have. I have three used cars at the time. Mind working with Vanel. When I was working with Vanel, because I'm very hard working, I was shipped from one division department to another department. I went almost all the department, doing the big department. So I kind of understand and the risk also because she's a consultant. I was working with her directly at the office. So I also learned office administration and all that. So it became handy at the time and said I have to form a company. So come yours. We have Y, which is Yahoo, my name, Google Run, K Paul, and S is set. I'm set for Yahoo Google Run. So that is yours. So the year 2001, I registered the company with my three cards. <laughs> three old cards. And even during that registration process, Ghana Policy Authority, their requirement was we need a minimum of five cards office set up before they give you a license. I don't have, I have three cards. I don't have office, so I don't qualify. I speak to a friend who gave me his office for the canvas, let me put it that way. And another friend gave me his two cars, and I got the five cars requirement to get the license from Ghana Tourism Authority. So, yours become an official car rental company in Ghana. But the question is, how am I going to get the business? I am not know. And I ask a question, do I want to be like, we call them down say, you go to the most of the hotel, you see this car rental, you know, in the liberal cars, park there. Do you have, is that the way to go? Or should be a company like Banet? Or we have the middle, like the um, Jobesh and Time, you know, we are doing very well, but they are not out there. So I have to make a choice. I decided to go for the Vanet type, European type, out there. So the little money I made from Vanet A, working with Louis, I printed my brochures, everything. I opened a bank account with my company business name at the time. And one key thing is every money that comes to my hand, I put it in my bank. Sometimes I'll issue the check and pay it in and then take it back for just that record that there's a transaction going on. Because many of us are doing good business. But if you go to the bank, one of the challenges we are not able to raise finance is that there's no record. We don't keep records of what we do. My time at one point was 2003. When Ghana was led US, US Africa Sister City Conference for the first time. Sister City, there are cities in America that have twin cities in Africa. So the conference was held in Accra, Ghana. And I bid for that conference with my three cars, three news cars. This conference is bringing about 400 participants, including six leaders from America. At the time, a friend told me there's something wrong with me because you're looking at 400 people coming, you're looking at S class and you know, those top end vehicles, and you have Toyota Corolla, Design Primera, and you said you were going to be for this conference. What I did was I find out who the country of Nepal was at the time, which was Prince. I did a little bag of check on him. I went to his office. When I entered, first question, young man, what can I do for you? First question. I said, well, I'm told we're organizing a conference and I have a transport company that I think I have all the cars you require. I know my research on him revealed that 
He liked Mercedes Benz. And I said, I'm going to give you a complimentary car, which is Mercedes Benz, E class, if I'm giving the contract. Then he said, sit down. So I sat and we talked. Go and bring your proposal. All this while well, I don't have office. Because the office given to me was cosmetic for me to get the lunches from Ghana Tourism Authority. So my receipt book, my contract, everything is in my car boot. So I drive with everything, you know. And when I'm having a serious meeting, I, I choose a hotel. Because I don't have office. And I don't want them, I shouldn't, because when they know I don't have office, they won't take me serious. You know, they won't take me serious. So we meet at hotels. We went through and won the thing to provide transport for Sister City Conference. The challenge here is that I said I have three cars. They are not new cars. So none of them have been qualified to pick any of the dignitaries. And so how do you handle such complex situation? A contract. A contract is signed. But my experience from Banet driving and all that, I understand the industry. So I ask them that they will pay me 50% out front. And then when we finish the conference, they pay the remaining 50%. Prior to that, I went to then go lay them some of the car attack companies and block their cars that I'm being given a conference for one week. So I need to your bank, I need blah blah blah. So they pay me the 50%. I went to this car companies and pay them. I even pay them some that I have to pay them 100%, you know, for me to have the car. So you see, I have three cars, but I was able to provide transport for 400 participants, and it was very successful. It was the first time I went to the castle with President before, and you know, all these dignities. That was a springboard for yours. Because after that conference, and after paying all the, I call them tech parties that I went there, I made about twenty thousand dollars. Then I don't have office. My cars are old. So what will I do with this twenty thousand dollars? And I have a big dream, you know, because my dream was, my vision was to build a company that is equally valuable or more than valuable, not the middle. So what I decided at the time, which if today I will not do that, I use the money to build an office. Again, I'm saying that you start with what you have. Fortunately for me, my mother had a piece of land at the Kusua Green. So after making that money, I spoke to my siblings if they would give it to me to put up. I decided to put up a small container there to have an office. But a friend walked to me when we started dating. A friend came and said, said, we see you this land. Why not do a storage building so we can rent some and still occupy the part, part of it? All I had was $20,000. My car was full. So I said, okay. And we did the foundation for a storage building. So we got to a point, the protest stopped, stopped, you know, couldn't move on. My car was full, nobody would rent. Fortunately for me, I got someone to pay me to rent the ground floor. So I made money from renting the ground floor for four years to complete the whole building. So now I have office. I took four years at once, complete the whole building, give the ground floor to a pharmacy shop who paid the four years in advance. And then upstairs became, even upstairs are two more offices. I rent part and also so I made money to finish my office. Now I have office. All this time, every money goes to my account at the bank. Every money. That was around 2005. So we did a conference 2003, 2005. So 2006, Echo News, Echo Bank launched the first, for well, the first time that the bank started leasing, virtual leasing was launched at the time. And I went there and <clears throat> I was able to get my first lease of vehicles because of my little little money I 
to the account to redeem it to cars and to add to my fleet. By 2000, and this, later part of 2006, someone informed me that West African Gas Pipeline want a transport company. They want to change, you know, their transport company. So they want a transport company that can provide transportation from Accra, Beni, Togo, Ghana, and Dakar. So 
we were able to sign the West African Gas Pipeline contract. And as part of the project with third party, it took everyone two months to finalize the paperwork in buying the cars for me. So we did that two months. Uh, the money we made had to go to this third party. And by, before you were giving the funds, you have to pay, they don't find 100%. You have to put out 20%, and then you pay 80%. So the question here is how am I going to pay a company? I don't want to print the paperwork. All they need is I should pay my 20%, and then they will release the cards to me. But that 20% also is the money that this third party has to use it to pay them. So what I did was, Ecobank bought 25 cars for me, and the total cars in the fleet, Baku fleet, was 35. The five is on four pieces, maybe 40. Okay. So I look at the 25 cars that my cars will come and replace. I use their money to pay the deposit for everyone to release the cars, okay? And I sit with them and I said, payment will delay a little bit. So give me one month and I'll pay you, but I'm taking their car off. So I pay the 10 that are working with me because I couldn't raise all the cars. Because if I don't pay them, they'll stop working. The question here is that this 25 that I have released them, they are not happy with me, but it will not hurt the business so much because the key thing we should always know always is that business is a moving concern. Okay? So once it's profitable and you're going somewhere, you can pay the person, no matter what it is. But if you use the money to pay the person and the business is not able to run, you will have issues. Okay? So I was able to negotiate with them and I have my 25 cars. It was difficult, but we still through we saved through it, you know. I want our to be conversation, okay? So I do you want to bother so much on the slides. Okay, sure. So we have West Africa in that start line. <coughs> Sign. I have to put team together because this one is not a, a, a project like sister city that you bring five people by one big project and then it ends. But it's a whole two years contract. So I have to form my team. So you see, I said you have to start in business no matter what it is. Just get it started. You start. You don't have to. You don't need to have all the expertise. You don't have to have all the things, all the money. Because many a times we hear people saying, and I don't have capital, I cannot raise money, and I don't have that. You know, it's all kinds of complaints why we are not able to start any business. Okay. But I believe that when you start, you will get people to help you. Those expertise that you don't have, people to help you fill those expertise. You know. I don't know. So there is one man that I use the money instead of paying the third party to pay everyone, get the cars out. I owe them. So there's a gap. How do I fill the gap? Then relationships come in here. Yeah. I went to West African Gas the financial controller and I said, I'm having cash flow issues because I have a contract. So if you can pay me one month out front, it will help me. Similar. But he also said, anything that I thought they could do to help me make sure that they get what they want should be there. So the financial controller agreed me and paid me that money. So I was able to pay all the third party. So even the one month that I gave them, I paid them any before the one month. So what I have done is that I still have a good relationship with them. You know. So what project ran from 2000 and later from 2006 all the way to Guru Nani. It comes to an end. The profit I made, I decided to invest it in office building. So I built my second office because the first one was the one the pharmacy came and you know. So I built my second office. This time around, 
I didn't do my homework very well or whatever. The last is the government one, which I went to A and do all the documentation and they listen to me and I paid. I put the structure on, on it. Six months down the line, one fine morning came to me. So what happened was when I finished doing that, I leave the first one because that was around 2010, 2011. At the time, Moving Big Ambassador Hotel is coming up. And one point has come to an end. And I decided that my experience with Panel, I said I want to do something different. So I decided after Sister City and Waku, I wanted that if you are providing corporate transport, it's better because when you have the contract, what I can just about when Chevron is a big brand today. So their contract alone allow the bank to give you facility. Because when you work the cash flow, the numbers, you know, three years you're able to pay for whatever amount the bank has invested. So starting from small to a big company, okay, this is what I did because I have the contract. I use the contract to raise, to go to the bank, to raise money, and then it pays off. So after three years, I pay off the bank. I own the cars, you know. So 2011, Moving Big was coming up, and I was waiting for that contract. So what I did was, I leased my first office, because I have a second one now. So I leased it, my dental clinic, for 14 years, to raise money to do Moving Big projects. Unfortunately for me, after finishing the paperwork, six months down the line, AMA came five more and demolish the whole thing. Everything. And I even have them, I have the document, why not wait tomorrow? We can take our air permission. They were like, they destroyed everything. So I don't have office again. And we were bidding, Google Big said they would come in session, you know. And I remember very well, bidding for Google Big. The general manager said, said, Moving Big is a big brand in the world. So we want to be associated with brands like New York Car, ABS, S, Baggett, not yours. Nobody knows yours. Yours is a local company that nobody knows. Yours. But I told him, but I agree, these are big brands. But in Ghana, yours is the best. <laughs> but it should, so I give to the challenge that it should visit our facility. I think a week or so, and our office was demolished, so I don't have office. The same strategy I used for West African Gas Pipeline, I used the same strategy to win revenue because I told them I'm going to buy them all the new car, and the bank now are confident in me because I was able to pay the 1.5 million given to me for West African Gas Pipeline project. That is every bank, you know. So what typically I do is I did was because of that experience from Marco, I got the contract before they started the process and it took two months, so there was a gap. You know, this time moving back, I went ahead and asked the bank to give me a line of credit. So in case I sign the contract today, I can draw the, of that one, okay? So I have the money sitting before even negotiating with moving back. So I was about to tell them I'll buy them a brand new car. It was the same approach, but this time around, I have the money ahead of me instead of getting the contract before going for the money. And again, we won't move and pay. So if you go move and pay right now, and Yacht is the only company in Ghana that is providing total transport for a hotel like more than pay. Total transport. What I mean by total transportation is when I was advanced, working at Vanity, Vanity provide transport for the guests that use the hotel, not the hotel as a corporate entity, you know. But you have to provide transport for moving people as a corporate. The general manager, airport shuttles, town passing, everything, you know. So that is the difference. I don't have the expertise in providing transport for hotel, you know. Even though I did something small with a body which was way back, but I wasn't on that same level. But you see, the spirit here, you talk about the entrepreneur. 
I said, all the means you have to start it. Once you start it, you get people. I call them angels on assignments. There are angels all over. Okay? But how you attract them? It takes your attitude, your character. And, and sometimes we go to church and you see people crying. I don't agree to that. Why are you sad? Because, <laughs> yes, because the Bible said, in Genesis 4, that God created man and gave man dominion over everything. He didn't say some of the things, okay? So you have power in you. But many a times, it is fear, self doubt. And what brings about fear? For me, it's about if you don't know something, if you don't know your game, you are not sure of what it is. So you, you create fear. And once fear of any step in, you can't think it right and you can't get it right. Okay? So if you believe that you are a representative of God here on earth, then why do you be so sad and what are you? Have confidence in yourself. Because the angels are there. All they need is your confidence to attract them. But before you do that, you have to have the right attitude because even Jesus Christ was born through a human being. You know, people thought it should be on job from the sky to come. No. So our dealing with people. When I was talking, I was saying a friend introduced me, a friend introduced me, a friend introduced me. You don't know who that angel is. And sometimes I'm a Jesus person. I came here with Mumbai 2012 Sonata. We have Jaguars, Mercedes Benz, and whatever in our fleet, okay? The cars, all those assets, doesn't make me set. It's me, okay? Relationship with people. I go to places and your are black and things. You look at the look, the reception, the look is like, who is this person, okay? Until they want to know your status in society before they give accord you some respect for what I do. Okay? So for me, the angels work because you don't know who that angel is. Right down here, when you walk out, someone will approach you. You don't know the person. Your attitude, because all the people who introduce me to, some are drivers. They overhead, they are bosses in conversation that they are opening up a tender and whatever. You know, and they come and whisper to you that hey, these people said they don't open tender and whatever. Can you go and see this man and talk to him? I don't know. But if you don't have a good rapport, a good relationship with that person, you won't do it. You won't do that. So our relationship, and you see, it starts from right from school, even within your family. Because I said something that you don't need money to start a business. You don't need money to start a business. What you need is your vision and your attitude. You right. And sometimes you have wonderful ideas. But nobody trusts you to help you. Uh, repair it. If you give me your money, you will be safe. Okay? So, and you don't have address. So no bank will give you money. So it should start from your family. They know you. You see? So if your family member can trust you and say, okay, take one million cities or take whatever it is. Then you know over the years what you have built, you can trust you. Okay? The same thing extension to the banks. You have to have a track record for them to base on that, to extend that credit for you. Okay? So our attitude is very, very, very important in everything we do, okay? And if you listen to my speech, I said someone introduced me. Someone introduced me. Those are people I refer to, the angels on the sign. Because I remember very well, some kind of sign. Even the invoice, you have to use Excel to calculate mileage, hours used, and all those details. I don't know how to do that. But I got someone who had that background to put it together. At the end of the day, the company won. Okay? So, so, so that is it. We want to move in And we are still a moving big. As we speak, Kipinski opened last week. And Yoss also won the big. Wow. Yes. And we are the sole transport company for Kipinski, Global City. Hotel as well. 
the saving strategy. But it was because of integrity, you know, you have to have that to make it work. I will touch a little bit on uh, cash flow. You know, like I said, you don't need money to start a business. You need your vision must be clear. If it is clear, you can explain it to the bank manager. You can explain it to your auntie. You can explain it and it makes sense and they're ready to come on board to make you realize that dream. Okay. And many a times, what I realize is that we tend to fight our business without knowing. Okay. I told you that I dropped out of school at some time. Okay. So how am I going to go to the bank and negotiate and put all this together? I said, you know, I learned by, by myself. You can help yourself. You know, uh, for me, education is not only sitting in the classroom and you know taking lectures and whatever. You, know. you can help yourself, but you can only do that if you know what you want. Many people. The challenge we face in this part of our world is that we are not sure of what we really want to do. So we start something and look the challenges. Definitely challenges will come. You know. Then someone can say, no, now it's booming. We're going to China. You want to join. Okay, you haven't really done anything. People look at yours and think, wow, somebody are hard to go to buy all these cars. Yes, we are buying because it's a project. And see, what we have decided to do now is that we go for comfort. I don't buy a car anymore for you to walk in to come and rent. But I never share with the company. We are agree for two years or three years. I even ask the person to give me this choice of car. If you go to the best field right now, we have to work, Jaguar, and the existence. Those are the choice. They want those cars. Okay? They said they are European. We want the European to reflect. So they will use this. We will very good. Okay? But you go to Mervyn the shuttle bus are Mercedes Benz, but most of the cars are there. Okay? Which again, it is very important to, when you are going to negotiate contracts and whatever, to do a little background check about the company, about the people you are going to negotiate. Because I know Prince Elwani, who owns Mervyn Bay, has shares in that. You know? So using that vehicles at Mervyn Bay is like having this. So it's a plus for me, okay. So that is what that is what we do. We buy it for you, and then we manage it as well for you, okay. Cash flow. I believe that, in my opinion, your cash flow management to be in line with your business plan, your strategic. Plan because many many businesses collapse or don't pass across the five years. Because first year about fifty percent will go, second year about you know why? Because it's not because the business is not profitable, but because of the cash flow management. Okay, you find that the contract is given you, and immediately the CEO buy red rubber or S class. Is the cost to the business. Maintenance of that car, your lifestyle has to change, so many things. Okay? So you realize that in the little shop, because I was saying, I said our office at Laboni was demolished. You know, and starting a week from the demolition, we were able to sign with them. Okay? We were still strong because of our cash flow management. Okay, those shops didn't let us uh, uh, fall, you know. So as you start, challenges will come. What are you will come? But if you, the leader, you know your strength and you are more it, you will be able to expand the business to a level like that all those things that you wanted for yourself will come, you know. Why is it your cash? Flow management to be in line with your strategy is that 
Sometimes business we look at the asset, the fiscal asset, the buildings, the materials, the whatever, and we think the business is doing very well. But you realize that you can't pay salaries, or they will come and say we need money for four, and you don't have the cash. Let me share this story with you. This man has companies, have houses, okay, but all he does is he is not focusing on one thing, you know. You invest from the little you want to invest it here, you miss, you know, you are overstretching yourself. And what happened? This man felt sick, they had to fly him outside. They don't have money. They tried to sell some of his properties to raise money. By the time you find the buyer, he is dead. You know, sometimes we tend to do because as the entrepreneur or the vision barrier, a whole lot of ideas come to your mind every day. And it's so exciting, you know. All of them wanted you to, you know, do this with that. And people in society, if you're not careful, that is, if you don't know, that's what I said, if you know what you want, will advise you, oh, why not try this? It's fetching. It may be fetching, or it may appear because of the edifice and what it has that they are doing well. But underneath, it is not. And you find yourself jumping into the same thing. If you're not careful, you will last your business. So, what I'm trying to say is that don't look at your background, don't look at whatever. There are a whole lot of needs around, a whole lot of needs around. And once you are able to identify one, but you should, be, you should be sure that you are passionate, because you need to have passion, that you can get up to him when without feeling anything in order to make it work. Once you find your passion, get it started. You don't need to have everything to start. Start from somewhere and, and you will get people to come along to help you realize your dream. Um, I'd like to pause here and let's interact, interact a little bit and then, and then we, we, we So thank you very much for the opportunity. Definitely, definitely an idea of your story. You're starting from such humble backgrounds, where you are right now. Uh, my, my question would be, if, I mean, looking back, you, know, you mentioned a few times that you know, the, the seven mistakes, that, the obvious mistakes that you made, like you know, invested in an office before you were looking at funding or actual investment. Maybe it was a new investment. But what I want to understand is your human resource, when you're getting the people to buttress your businesses. How did you come across them? I know you say people, their angels out there, but just to actually structure your office and get the people to move your office to the next level. How, how, how did you get yes. that stage? Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, one of, for me, one of the key three things, or the number one, is your human resource capital. It's very, very important, okay? And like I said, my background, I know my weaknesses. So I have to identify certain people that will complement that weakness. Everyone has an expectation and everyone has a vision that wanted to realize. Sometimes the challenge we face is that we the vision bearers are not able to explain clearly to our team where we want the business to go. So there's always a conflict between you and them. You are the boss, so when you are coming, it's like the boss is coming, they put up the face for you. But because they don't understand you, and you also don't understand them, there's always an issue, okay? So, for me, one of the key things I look at is, what is the person's interest? What do you want for yourself? Okay? Once I know what you aspire to become, it helps me to know that you can fit in here. And we also train, we spend a lot of money to train. My management team, for example, they feel like part, they feel part of the company, that they own the company, you know, is for us. And, and, and the question I ask myself is that they are working every day. And I'm happy to say that today I don't get involved so much in running on the company because if you convince me, 
from recruitment to whatever. I didn't even know. I didn't even know some of the writers now. Okay. So I can I can realize my vision because I said when I quit school, what I said to myself was I'll get the job, work, make money, go back to school. Now the business is different from me. Okay. The team, they are using their own strategy, they are making mistakes, but I encourage them to do They will make mistakes and will learn. But one key thing that drops that there is a teamwork, they understand me. And whatever I say to them that I will do, for example, we're going to bring this contract, we will finish and we will make this. You guys will have this, okay? I make sure they get it. So that, that trust is there, that relationship is there. When you say something, now listen, let's move our revenue from A to Z. When you get there, this is what you also get, okay? You make sure you do it. If you, for one reason or the other, you're not able to do it, let them know. And also, transparency. Everything is clearly known. I don't hide information from them, but you hide from them. What happens is that they may be doing things that will help the business at the end of the day, okay? So, it's working for me, you know, this is because I highly why any of my management team to design. You know, the challenge has to do with the operational assistance, which is the drivers, you know, because of we train them and people push them when we work with them, you know. And finding a solution to that, what I have done is we let the really do We have set up training institute to train them because I realize that on weekends, especially Ghana, the biggest social event is food run. It's the biggest in Ghana. And top guys go to the phone bar. They want to have fun, drink. Who drives them? So let's provide chauffeur services. You know, they will come and drive your car and to and back, okay? But doing that also, I'm solving the tech over. Because now when my driver leave, I have already trained them. Currently, when my driver leave, what happens is that when I bring in a new person, it doesn't fit in. Because they have to go through some training, okay? So there's a gap. But once the training institute is running, we always have training personnel that can fit in. And the deal I'm coming to have with them is that listen, if someone wants you, come see us. We'll protect you. And if you go in the way, you can come back to the pool because we can outsource you to another person, which is working, okay? So I think that you should, you should have integrity, you should be open to your team and let them know where you want to go and are they part of it? Do they see themselves in that vision, you know? Once you do that, they will come along, they will work their heart out for you. Yes. When the office got broken down by the way and and Mary Pick was coming to the inspection, how how did you survive that day? Yes. What when the office was what I did was Joy FM came around and media, they want to talk, but they didn't speak to any media. If I don't want to be out there, it's a negative publicity, okay? For for me and the new hotel that I'm going. So I I was quiet about it. What, what I did was, I told them that I'll bring my cars to, instead of them coming, you know, I'll bring my cars because we have issues in our office. For one reason or the other, they, they didn't come, you know, they didn't, because I was able to provide them enough information, you know, and for me, what also made the magic for movement was, during the one-on-one -on -one interview, Mr. Chase asked me whether I have worked for a hotel before. And I mentioned Abadi Beach Hotel because I have done something with Abadi Beach Hotel. So he asked me, who can I mention at Abadi Beach Hotel? And I mentioned I'm the Gua. Okay, and he was blah 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 blah. I never knew that Mr. Chase has once worked at Abadi. He actually opened Labadi Beach Hotel, which I didn't know. Okay. So if I have learned, it would have been now what I told him was a true story. Not knowing Andy Guapo has been hired by Movenbeck, which I didn't know. Okay? So he asked Andy what I said, and Andy confirmed exactly what I said because that was the story. 
you know, I pay for buying it because I increase their rate. We have an agreement that if one person go up about 15%, I will increase my rate from one to 25 percent when they want to. So I stop because that will affect the quality of service I give them. You know, so I end it. And that was what I told Mr. Chase. And they asked and they only confirmed that. So I believe we have enough information that he thinks it's okay to go with, you know. Yeah. And my, my proposal, because my methodology, I explain how we're going to manage the transport by setting up when you go to the airport, you have a protocol team there who meet the guests with a moment black hat, you know. Then now we double them, there are two. One of them is holding the black hat, one of them is having the traces, which is the list of the people coming. So when you come, welcome is the uh, monster, you take your name and he walks you into the car. Okay? These are innovations that I have added while when I was doing when I was at front, okay? Now when we sit in our car, all the cars have Wi-Fi, internet, because there's a lot of traffic in Accra. And sometimes when we travel to a foreign land, we don't know the connection. Your roaming may not be working and what have you. So if you get internet, it's a plus for you. Okay? So we have internet in the car. We have playlists in the car, which if you ready you want, classical, high life, the driver will play. And the driver will ask you, we need honey. We we'll give you the, uh, the complementaries in the car for you to choose what you want. We also have hand sanitizer, we have tissue paper, we have four magazines in the car. Driver will, even though he has a name tag, he introduces himself and tells you the distance and all this. So these are added value, okay, which have made your stand out from my previous Vanderbilt car, you know, and, and it's keeping us. Yeah. I, I want to understand that you, you, you described your journey and I want to, it seems like you, know, you, you have a, a determined attitude to do things and even when you're not sure what your next step is, you take on any opportunities that come to us. What I want to understand is, at which point did you realize that okay, we're no longer Uh, for instance, you're talking about corporate governance, you're talking about 
you know, structures that you set in place. Um, I know that you've got some experience with that end, which is where you were. But obviously, it wasn't, you weren't in the management, so I don't know, I think I missed that. So, in terms of growing your business and learning from your mistakes and getting above ground, what that meant is, what that equal was to you now, so, this is what you should do at this stage, this is what's helpful. From my experience, you should probably do this now. Yes, I would say I have a lot of mentors. Two books. See, people have written a lot of books all over. And when you read them, you get to know the experience. But the key thing is that you should know, you have vision, you should know what you want. It is you. At the end of the day, you see, when you invite someone to come and help you or mentor you on what? You see, it should be specific. You should know what you are asking the person that I'm going to want to manufacture this plastic thing. Then someone can say, Oh, I know someone who is good with this one, so he can help you do it. Okay? So, yes, people like Prince Kofia Mwabe, there are a whole lot of people that inspire me how they made it. But I don't really have like one on one personal mentorship, you know. But like I said, you should know what you want. Once you know what you want, that brings about the vision, that brings about the passion in you. And that helps you to identify <coughs> the human resource, the people you need around you. Because your people, the inner circle, the people around you are also very, very, very critical, you know, in for you to move to the next level. You know. So so this is this is this is what I what I what I think. Yeah. I have two questions actually. So the first one would be a follow up on what you said. So at no point in time, apart from reading the books, did you have any person you went to for advice in terms of your business? Would you say you had someone, a go-to person, who was in the industry or who would give you some sound advice on what to do? Apart from the books you read. And the second thing would be that with regards to the transport industry, where do you see it going in the, in the next um, five years? What advice would you give to them apart from having a vision and having the right attitude and passion to, you know, to go for what you want? What other thing would you um, say that would help the transport industry in Ghana? Yes, I would say, as, like I said, I don't have one personal mentor, but I have a team. See? When I realized after Sister City, when we went to West African Gas Pipeline, I realized that the dynamics have changed. Okay? So I have a team which now form the board. Then it's what like a friend put together or a team put together. So when there is a proposal or there's something we're going to work on, they, they have various expertise from some are lawyers, some are, you know, various background to so I can say they are my advisors. You know, so we all sit down and they advise and then we execute. Now is the ball. Then it was it wasn't that official like a ball. Okay, when I started way back, but I always have this team around me. You know, remember I was saying that what's again that even the team was a little was so tedious to do. There was someone there. I remember who was, was a financial advisor from Bishuta. He sat from Bila Bosa and prayed. Just to get the template right, get it done. Okay, so I can say that he advises me on that, and I have many of such, many of such people. That's why I said that your inner know, circle, people around you, is very, very also important to guide you in realizing your dream. But you should lead, you must lead. You know, you should be able to tell them what you want, and therefore they will come with their expertise and get it done for you. And some can tell you that this 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 won't work. Let me give you an example. Going to the PNC, okay? The team said, I said no, because it will overstretch us. We're going to borrow money. You know, the micro environment is not that conducive. Next year's election year, and we're going to borrow new money. So I said no. But the team said no, let's do it. The reason they give me makes sense was our economy now is not that suffocated, okay? So what about if Kempinski is on the same power with Mobile The crowd moved from Mobile to Kempinski. What happened to you at Mobile 
And what happens is that if another car runner comes in close to the pin speed, then he will be operating on the same level that we are doing. We are creating a competitor that can be attracted even at more than we Okay? So we should go for it. And I believe what they said makes sense. So we are doing the pin speed, you know, so I have a team. Yeah, the second one, the transport industry, I think that we have a bright future. Um, without the movement of people, there won't be any economy. You see, you know, everything starts and ends with movement, be it air, sea, land, and whatever. Okay? And if you look at where Ghana is going now, many experts are relocating to Ghana. And they, and or, or many more operations are focusing on their core business. Now, the banking industry sector wanted to outsource all their transport uh, sector because they realized that it takes a hell of it sits on their balance sheet, okay, which they want to treat it as a cost. Because you know, our tax regime, you all your expenses before you pay tax, okay. So, if it becomes expense, it is better on their books than they own those assets and going through what how are managing revenues and all that. So you can see that it's changing now. Many corporations want to do their core, focus on your strength, but you can't do everything. You, know, you have to know your strength and focus on that one. So that brings to us some of that and the transport business a business because we will be filling in that gap, solving that challenge that they have become business for us. Okay. So Ghana, I think, we all our transport system mentality have to be looked at. Okay, I think that short trucks should be scrapped. We shouldn't have this short trucks in the system anymore. We should have properly. And I also believe that this constant flooding, okay, largely is caused by human activity. When you go to set up the Udor River, there's market, there's very short bars and everything. They eat, they do everything, they put this the river. That's why we have the service and the service and it's always the way it is. My understanding, I was told that the ring road, which is circle, is the ring road. Then Accra is go around Accra. Accra was very small. Okay? Now we have Accra. So those days, that station was outside Accra, outside of Accra. We should relocate all the major cities, like going to the northern sector. The local station to go to Alta. Amasama or whatever it is. Cape Coast and whatever we go to after Kasua and so therefore we decongest the city immediately. Because I believe that where you have more people at one place, they will somebody will buy something, they will tell them to leave that, they will tell them to use loom or we you know all that thing. But if you don't let the people stay at one place by having urban transport system, effective transport system that you know that first bad leave at seven o'clock. And you start work at 8 o'clock, and you know it takes 45 minutes to get to work. It will even change your attitude because you can't join the second class. You will join the first class to work, okay? And you have very system, you know. So the transport industry have a great future. Once our economy is growing, I think we have a very bright future, you know. But it should be fun, you know, we should add value to it, you know. Yeah. So, so one Last question. I really want this as well. When you talk about training for your, for your drivers, I want to know what so what kind of drivers do you first deploy? What's the education of the body, the trade seven, the trade of the trade, and what the energy of seven the trade you have like what's your philosophy for managing them? You already explained the company culture, which is transparency throughout. But I want to understand, does that translate down to them as well? Yes. And how do you in terms of the ideas and how they do things and you know their attitudes and all those things, how do you manage, how do you work them to shape so that they carry the vision of the company and they feel yeah. as an One of our core values are people development. Okay, so it's very, very important in the company. And next year will be our 15th anniversary. Yeah. We're going to celebrate our 15th anniversary in Grand Star mm -hmm. because we believe we have something to celebrate, which is possibilities. See, everything is possible. If only you believe it, it is only you that can make it work. Okay? So, back to the training yeah. aspect. We take from SS. We have some GSS 
who speak fluently and should be able to speak fluently and write is that basically what you do, okay? Because most of the people who fail to do have to speak and understand the English, okay? We train them on our culture. Because you see, we should know the meaning of the scene. Koforibia. What is Koforibia? I said Koforibia and I said in Kokoru, you know, that you can engage any foreigner in a meaningful conversation. If you don't know your country, if you don't know your culture, what, what are you going to say? Okay? So we train them on that one. They should know the city, defensive driving, protocol driving. You don't drive uh, big military where one hand is here and you're using one hand, like you, know, you have to sit outright and, and you know, let the person know the distance in which you're going to cover and all that, and defensive driving. What to look out for because we are moving with a very important person. So uh, we met, we bring in this first person from DNA, from police, fire service to come and give them talks on police or for security when they are driving at night. What to look out for. Don't let them to fly out, follow you for a long time. Or you know, those basic things. We train them on that. You know, we also make them go through police background check. Because see, we can't afford, we can be sued, one person can sue us and then probably, you know. So, we want to make sure who we are working with. So, we let everyone, when we hire you, we do a background check. And every month, every month we have a program meeting, but within which we bring a topic, we can ask one of them to speak on, if one sits in your car, what do you do? You know, if you have a customer in your car, what do you do? You introduce yourself, you tell the person the amenities in the car, Tell the person, you ask the person the temperature in the car, whether it's too cold or it's too warm or all those things, and the person takes us through. Or any other interesting thing. So, so we get them involved, you know. And we have a supervisor that every morning brief them about the strategy for the day, you know. And it's, it's, it makes everybody in that area that we need as work as a team. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to know, is, was there any point in your life where you thought you had failed and probably how did you come back now? Yes, when I finished the Star City Conference, I made only thousand dollars. I used all the money to start the office. We got to house I didn't have money, my cars were old. So I realized I'm, I'm not going to finish. Okay, and see, so that was a bad business decision. I should rather use the money, buy more cars, to give it more revenue, and use some of the process to be golden. Okay, so the other way around. I can say I, I was almost I thought it's that is the end, you know, because there's no if I sell the cars to finish the building, I don't have cars anymore to work. And that was it. I thought um I was I can say I think actually you create your own life, you know, because I can say lucky for someone to step in at the time to rent it for four years, you know, because at the time this actual high road is being constructed and most of the shop <coughs> was affected. So this pharmacy shop was looking for a place. So I was fortunate to get him to, if not, they can collapse the business. That is why I said that many businesses collapse not because they are not profitable, but because of bad cash flow decisions. You know, you have the cash. What to use it for? And if something happens, can you survive it? You know, it's, it's good. You have to always. So you always put your money into something that will give you returns. Quick returns. You know, short term to make terms, You know, you don't invest in. You don't need short term money to invest in long term. And long term. You, know, you have issues with, 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 with that. Yeah. So I want to. Cars, your question. Sorry? Cars, are you getting flat? Or are you not? I'm not saying that. I'm not. Wait, when you're not young, I spend time with my boys, my family. And I really love children. Yes, I really like children. So I set up an NGO. And see how we're going to do it. But I spend time with my family if I'm not at work, you know. 
normal, lateness, swimming, you can do whatever. Yeah, I know that. But, yeah. I mean, so that's, can you give me my last question? Um, so as an entrepreneur, when you started, how did you deal with corruption in the country? Because um, for me, there have been instances where I have to do a lot of registration of businesses and things, you know. And then you go to um, these government institutions and you know they stress you up. And then, but with you. There are the internal things that you can handle. There are things that when they're not going in the way you can handle. What about the external factors? Maybe they're not getting they're not you know, getting a lead on the um, bank. You have to go to the court to maybe get your own cars. Uh, has there been a situation like that? Or maybe you have to register the cars that you have. Do you pick an agency or do you go there yourself? What are some of the challenges you face with them and how do you think you can overcome corruption and um, corruption? Yes, in in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Corruption for me, I think, is a very broad thing. And all of us, if we can short back this, continue it one way or the other, is kind of. For example, you know very well that you are starting a program at 6 o'clock. Okay? And you know, or you are going, going to work. Okay, you know where you live, there's traffic, it will cause traffic. But you always don't start early and come to work and the reason why you want it is caution. You see? Then, 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 there's. It's like, it's like, we always think that the receiver is the person who is caught. But sometimes our attitude, you know. But, I think also that there's something we call law, okay, which is not exactly like corruption. Someone has done the thing, it's finished everything, okay, and after the show accusation, I don't see that as a corruption, okay. But once you offer something, you are doing something for me, and I give you something, and be kind and be whatever I I'm trying to influence your development, which you can. Yeah. Yes, to add to what my sister just said, not what uh, really about the corruption, but uh, in your personal experience, have you in any way maybe uh, proposed for a contract and you have fulfilled your part of the contract? And for the company to maybe pay you maybe a balance for your contract and the process that you have to get from them and they be delayed and your personal post charges, the balance that they have to pay you from your contract. Have you ever had any experience like that? That kind of way to finish. And instead of the people paying you, they are yes. paying and you become frustrated or something. Yes. I have had that once I was doing jobs for the government institutions. So I stopped. I have to make a decision, the mission of that. And you we should choose who you want to work with, you know. So I realized that you finish them and they send you forever for them to pay. And on and on and on. So there's nothing I can do, just to wait. And then also, as a company or as a business, you always have to make provisions for such things when it's happening. You know, then you can deal with it without necessarily putting pressure on you to go and try to say, you know, to drive someone to, you know, give you. And that you can structure with your bankers all the time. You know, once you have the reports showing that they haven't paid you, you can go to the bank and give you money against that reports. And all you do is that write a check and join you to cure that. So you can always go around that without necessarily going to trying to bribe someone or I don't really that. Yeah. Okay, uh, in continue to what I just had uh, uh, your question, maybe uh, you've had this contingencies or these difficulties. How do you affect the relationship between maybe you and your workers? In terms of in terms of you, the company delaying you, the payment, 
and uh, you pay in your case maybe at the end of yeah, the month. That's what I'm saying that you should have a backup plan. You see? One, because anything can happen. So you should always have a backup plan that in case of delay, this is what I will do. And one of the things is you have a relationship with your bank, you know, and that's things are credible. They will always give you money. So that delay will really come. Because you don't have to delay your workers, your salaries, and they depend on that, you know. So you always have to find a way of dealing with that. And then, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. You can end it. It's been such an eye on you. I spent um, a few years walking the streets, uh, walking the same corridors with you, and it was polite, good morning, how are you? I don't even know what the service you provide, and not really knowing the story behind this business, but it's been very enlightening, learning how you started and growing from a small business to uh, the business that you are now. Personally, I think it's something you should be thankful for. But also, thank you so much for teaching us your way for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Amen. That's one thing that I've been to always believe in yourself. When you look back, it's you. Always believe and don't be afraid to start. Just get started and you will be there. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As we start, so we finish. But just before we say our prayer, just let me give you this one. We do make this one. So next week we have um, Mr. Philip Ayesu. So uh, I'm sure most of you probably know more on television, but he's also got ex man and some other businesses that also share his journey with us um, here next week. Um, <coughs> Don't leave one with them. We have some refreshments. You know, hang out with us, get to know each other, get to know. If you have um, set past some time, maybe they can talk to you also before you go with them. You know, hang out with us, get to know us, get to know. Thank you very much for spending your time with us on Friday evening as we start to open the show today and Friday afternoon. And we're going to be ready Thank you, Father, we thank you for this day. We give you all the glory, the wonderful Mary. We've learned so much today, and we are very grateful for the life of the speaker. We pray that as we share the Lord's experience, we give you more wisdom and more direction with the Father that is taken. And everything that you've done, we thank you for. We thank you for everything that we've kept here today. And we also apply it in our daily lives. At the end of the day, we say, God, we thank you that you've learned as much. We thank you for answer prayer. Amen. 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 So much. I wish I had time to find out. I'm going to say to you, 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 to Oh, I want to be there. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's a good word. That's all that I want. I want to get one of the of the um, one, so that one. Okay. Okay.